So we're at this point in the story, and it's um, 2001. Eric Lindbergh has just decided to uh, make his transatlantic flight. Um, hopefully, you know, we're at a low point in the X Prize. Um, Blast Off, which was a company that was going to potentially be our sponsor, had splashed down. That money was not going to materialize. I did a podcast with Bill Gross talking about, about Blast Off, and folks can go and hear that incredible journey. Um, but uh, uh, we're at a point where I'm not sure how we're going to fund the foundation. We have this this uh, hole-in-one insurance in place, and I'm having these $50,000 Fridays. But there's this balloon payment coming up of millions of dollars, and I've been wholly unsuccessful. You know, I missed the entire dot-com revolution where, you know, these dot-com companies were spending millions and tens of millions, and holy shit, I forgot to, like, pitch them properly. And I'll never forget, I am uh, in my apartment on uh, Third Street in Santa Monica, and I I'm pick up this copy of Fortune magazine, and the cover issue says, the wealthiest 40 women under 40. And I'm just flipping through this, and I happen to land on this page about Anusha Ansari. And it says, Anusha Ansari has just sold her company, uh, uh, Telecom Technologies, to Sonus Networks for $1.3 billion. And her dream is to fly on a suborbital flight into space. And I'm like, say what? <laughs> and it's like, I, read, I read that line like three times. It's like, to fly on a suborbital flight into space. It's like, who says I want to fly in a suborbital flight? You know, people say I want to fly to space. And I'm like, oh my God, this is her. This is her. And I am like, I'm start like, you know, Googling around or whatever, searching for telecom technologies and Nushan Sari. And um, it turns out that your company had been an asset sale. The company was no longer around. I'm not sure how. I don't remember exactly. Uh, I might have been a uh, member of my team. I, tracking you down, tracking down a your past executive assistant and uh i get that person on the phone and i'm like you know, like like this is her this is like I, i've been told no greg's been told no eric's been told no uh, you know a hundred times and like i have to meet you i have to i have to meet you and i i extract a a promise out of your past ea um who tells me that you're vacationing in hawaii that if i send her a stack of materials that she would forward it to you. And why don't you pick up the story from there? Yeah, so uh, I was uh, taking some time off with family because we had worked nonstop for over 10 years building a company, sold the company, and then ended up working for Sonus Network um, up until you know the debacle of, of 2000. <laughs> Uh, in 2001. And, um, and so we were taking some time off and I received a call. I said, I had said no meetings because all of a sudden, because I was in the papers, everyone wanted to talk to me, uh, about money and donation. And I wasn't ready. I, um, so, um, she calls me and says that there's someone who wants to meet with you and talk to you. Uh, and he said he wants to talk to you about space and, uh, at that time, when we had sold the company, I had made the decision that I wanted to go back to the passion I had since childhood and going to space. So I had enrolled in a master's in astronomy. I was studying. I was researching to see what are my possibilities and how can I get involved in an industry that I had nothing to do with um, and uh, decided that suborbital was probably the most viable option for me at that time. Uh, and when uh, she mentioned space, I'm like, oh, 100%. First meeting when I come back. Um, and we came back, I, I don't remember exactly, but a few weeks after that. And you and Byron were the first people I met with uh, yes. in our office. I remember, I was like, Byron, you have to come with me. Uh, first of all, <laughs> you were in Dallas and Byron was I think, in, in Houston. And it's like, I have to bring my, my astronaut with me <laughs> wherever I go. I used that game card with, uh, with Eric and I was going to use it again with, with Anusha. And yeah. um, 
Uh, that made a big difference because I had never met an astronaut. Ah. And Byron was the first astronaut I ever met. And, you know, just sitting next to him and, and having him talk about his experience in space flight and uh, giving me an autographed picture, that was like I was in heaven. <laughs> So we, so I want to tell this story a little bit. So um, to get some context here, you were born in Tehran and you grew up, what was your childhood like and what was your connection to space? Well, um, I, uh, I fell in love with the night skies, basically. I wasn't thinking about going to space, but as a child, I was very curious. I, I'm still very curious and that gets me into all sorts of trouble, but um, I slept outside. We didn't have air conditioning. I slept outside at night, uh, summertime. And just gazing at the night sky was this field of possibility. It's, uh, a place where your imagination can basically make up anything you want. And, and that's what I did as a child because I had a normal childhood until I was 12 and revolution happened in Iran, which brought, you know, guns and violence and screaming and shouting to my door for the first time in my life. And then the war between Iran and Iraq happened where, you know, all the things that come with the war again, death, destruction, uh, lack of food, water, electricity, blackouts all the time, bombings, sirens going to bunkers. And um, all of that was too much for me to handle. So space became this refuge for me, a place where uh, in my mind, I would go there and tell myself stories of this wonderful, peaceful place, the Star were, Trek world. And you were Trekkie <laughs> along with me, along I with was, all of us. Yeah, I was. Yeah. I started watching Star Trek um, in Iran, dubbed in Farsi, all sorts of sci-fi, but Star Trek was my favorite. And Spock was my favorite character because I wanted to, I didn't want to be the captain. I wanted to be the science officer, the person who discovers <laughs> all sorts of things. and. Um, so I was on a journey of discovery uh, when I looked at the night sky. So and fast that's, forward that's a few decades later, um, in your office, uh, Hamid, who was your husband then, Amir, your uh, brother-in-law, then um, another uh, uh, brother of, of, of Hamid's is there. And Byron and I are pitching you and we're saying, uh, basically, listen, we're looking for a title sponsor. Um, we're looking for, at that point, um, the money to cover this hole-in-one insurance balloon payment and then monies to operate the foundation. And I'm like, it, it's, it's like, I remember I couldn't sleep the night before because I was so excited. Like, this is the person. This is the person. I had felt that feeling before, but not anywhere near as much. And um, I, I remember leaving your room your offices without a yes and i was dismayed by that um and uh, so what was what was going on in your in your mind back then and uh and you know what did you what did you think why didn't you tell me yes on the spot you could have saved me a lot of heartache <laughs> it's the iranian in me i <laughs> uh, no, but um so we were sitting there and you you know gave your PowerPoint presentation, and we had a good conversation. And I remember thinking to myself that you were describing this competition, and I had not thought of a competition at all, um, but you were describing how you're going to ask the world to build a spaceship in their garage and then fly not once, two times before they would get any money. And I'm thinking to myself, wow, what a brilliant approach to innovation. As an entrepreneur, you know, I had selected teams, built teams, asked them to build things. Usually, you know, they were late. They didn't deliver exactly what I wanted. I had to pay them up front before they delivered anything. <laughs> I'm like, we should do this more in building things and especially high risk thing, which is what, uh, you know, most of the companies that my family and I built were about doing things at the edge. So I, I had the risk-taking gene mm. in me already, and I saw this as a way to do risky things, but risk mitigated through a competition. So in my you know, sort of calculating head, I was thinking, oh, this, this is a brilliant approach. On the other hand, my you know, kid, the space uh, cadet in me, 
just loved it because um, I wanted to go to space myself, but I also didn't want it to just be about me going to space. And I wanted it to be um, something that lasts afterwards. So the fact that we were asking the teams to basically build a reusable access to space the twice yeah. within two weeks um, told me that this is going to happen. We wanted to build a business. I mean, part of what you described to me, a whole industry in space. And that sort of also struck a note with me. I didn't, I, in my mind, I had said yes, but not verbally to you. <laughs> but, uh, and I wanted to consult with the rest of the family, frankly, also. Uh, we had glanced across the table. I felt like, you know, some were skeptical, some of them were okay. Um, but I wanted to make sure everyone was on board because it was significant, even though we had sold the company for 1.3 billion. Soon after that, um, the stock went, yep. you know, nose. Always take cash, new show. Sense. Always yeah, take cash. <laughs> <laughs> next, next time, next time. Yeah. But, uh, but, uh, so it was a significant, um, investment for, for us to do this. It wasn't, uh, nothing. And so I wanted to get consensus uh, as we were all making this bet together. And, and I truly didn't think of it as a donation. I felt, it was an investment in the future and it was an investment in the future that I wanted to be a part of. And uh, so it took us a little bit uh, to get back to you and say yes. So I'm back in my apartment in Santa Monica, the same place where I'd read that article and just like hunted you down. Um, and I get a call from Hamid, uh, your then husband, uh, with you on the phone. And I'm like, I'm just like, I have a nervous school kid, right? Like, what's going to happen? My, my entire future, the future of humanity lays in the balance here. Are they going to say yes or are they going to say no? And you said yes. And you said uh, that you would, you would fund uh, the capital. Uh, it was on the order of like five plus million dollars. I forget the exact amount. It covered all of our insurance payments. It gave us a couple million dollars of operating capital um, uh, to keep the foundation going. Um, and it was interesting, right? Because you said, listen, uh, we will backstop this. Um, if you can find another sponsor to put up the money, um, to put up the $10 million, we'll give you some of it. And, and so you, you know, you realize that as a family, um, you weren't bringing a massive PR budget to the table. And if we had, you know, Virgin X Prize or Amazon X Prize or some other large organization that would put a PR push behind it. it would be better for the overall thing um but we never did find that person and uh and i remember uh, setting up those meetings with you and going yeah. to them we went to houston rockets we felt like they probably will say yes we talked to dell we talked to bill banks and so many others and um nobody saw the opportunity it's crazy the potential we all saw in it now everyone wants to be part of it <laughs> People did see the opportunity, but then thought, oh, what's the downside? And decided yeah. not to. Yeah, it was I, I always. I remember the... people Go telling ahead. me, actually, um, I remember people saying that you guys are crazy um, because you're going to get people killed. And especially with the, you know, Challenger accident, Bombay accident, everything that was fresh in everyone's mind. And I had to actually write an op ed about it because I was saying that, you know, people who go, to the space business or flying to space, they understand the risk. There is a bigger purpose and, and, a, and a belief in the future. And they do it with the knowledge of the risk and, uh, you know, stopping all the progress in space exploration is dishonoring their memories because we're saying that what you believed in didn't matter or it wasn't right or it was not a good idea. And I think that's what people miss. And um, so you just needed the sister in your brotherhood. That's that's why. <laughs> yes, for sure. Uh, you were definitely the the missing missing component.